So today, after this brief news, we will speak about databases in Python because it's a topic that we will face today. We will meet in the remainder of the course several times. So this could, could give you an uh, introduction to how to use databases in Python to the various purposes. So how many of you, let me start with a question. How many of you know something about databases? So you don't know anything about database. Hello? Mm? No, perfect. Okay, so second question uh, about SQL. That is not so. <laughs> okay, so I will try to skip something for for you that already are expert on databases, and but give you some information for for you to understand this lecture. So, what is the goal of this lecture in in particular, but of database in general? The idea is to make some data, some information persistent persistent with respect of the application so when the application restart with the computer restart and so don't lose data that you are creating manipulating editing while operating in an application the second goal is to be able to manage let's say big amount of data not big 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 in the are uh, we will not manage one million uh, type tuple of information but it databases can support the handling of a really big amount of data not only memory in your computer but also saved in a persistent way somewhere in a computer obviously but somewhere and then the third goal of today is also to exploit the say the power of the sql that is a language it's a declarative language it's not a programming language but it's a language to handle this big amount of data to query to get some of this persistent data to insert new data to delete the data and to perform all this operation with complex data and in general not today with also probably not in this course but also complex query so complex way to interact to get information from the data to merge together information that are stored in this persistent uh, database mm -hmm. so the general architecture we can we will not it's a, a preview we will not stack on this architecture in this course but the general architecture could be we have uh, an application just in our case a python application that is over there and then this application in some way speaks with a database that typically is depicted in a, in a similar way of this and this database could be implemented in several way could have several let's say vendor of this database uh, and so the application speaks in some way with this database that is a server and you have read the HTTP readings, so you know what a server is. That is a server that provides data information to the Python application, in this case. So the server could be, obviously, on your computer, the same computer in which the Python application is running, or could be in a separate computer, in the same room, in the same network, all over the world. It's a server that exposes some services, in this case it's a database server and here is depicted as a mysql on one side or mariadb on the other side server mm, database server so these two are two let's say it's a family no they are like brother and sister it's similar uh, they so the first one in that picture is mysql MySQL server, it's an open source database server from Oracle, the same Oracle of Java. That is, it's open source, uh, even if it's handled by Oracle, it's full feature, 
it can run as a separate process as i said before it can run separately on your computer it can run a different computer connected on the internet or on the local network that allow concurrent access so multiple people multiple processes can allow can ac uh, access this database server and its content and it has obviously a website and it's a separate process in the sense that uh, for example in on macOS i installed this database so i installed the database as a program you can also have a, not this exact window but a similar um, content in windows or in linux and for example it uh, is a service if i list my installed service you see that is installed uh, uh, mariadb and its status is stopped so it's a it's a service an application that can run always in my computer while i'm doing other things and currently is stopped i don't we cannot use it directly because it's not started it's idle it it doesn't work uh, it's shut down in, in say, but it's a service if i start this service i can use i can close these windows i can use this database in a totally transparent way calling it m from my python application that i can for example create in pychar and interact with this database that is running on my computer you know, automatically or this same service could work on his computer or in a polytechnic computer or in, in a computer that stay in California for what we can have so it's a service software application that runs somewhere in this case it will run on my computer and so, so the first type of database that we have seen here is MySQL, and that is this one. It's open source database service for server from Oracle. The second kind of database that are connected to the first one is called MariaDB. That is an open source uh, database server that was forked from MySQL server. So at the beginning, we have only MySQL server basically as an open source pro product then uh, long story very brief oracle uh, by mysql server and the, the yes uh, enter in this in the man, among the maintainer the main maintainer of the open source database server as some of the core developer of mysql server decide to step over they don't like the main the actual management they don't like they have some fears they don't like how things uh, will move with this presence of oracle and they say okay it's open source i will fork it and we will start developing we have knowledge on it because we are a group of core developer on mysql server and we start our version of uh, mysql server and so they create this mariadb that is an open source fork of mysql that is community driven basically we don't have big industries in this MariaDB it's basically the same things functionally than uh, MariaDB is 99% or something around compatible with MySQL server in some cases it's even faster as a process a software than MySQL server and typically is pre-installed on most Linux distribution or could be e more easy to easier to install MariaDB on Linux than my SQL server and it has a website so we put it in the same picture because they are more or less let's say the same things as a feature they are almost identical as uh, performance they are more or less identical in some cases this is better in the, in the other cases this is the other but they are let's say a MySQL server database two types of the same to simplify database server and, and this is a, one type of database server is a database server that store that is run as a process and it's a separate uh, application that runs let's say independently from any python program that you may have then we have a second family of uh, uh, database that is sqlite how many of you have heard of SQLite? 
yes good so now you can no um, joking um, SQLite is a database is not a database server so notice that we I don't I didn't depict this as a database I depict this as a document hmm, sheet of paper because SQLite is a database but it's not a database that you install and it runs as a separate process as a separate application it's just a file in your application and but the process is more or less the same you have a python application that at a certain point you want to store get or update some data that is stored in a persistent way in your computer in this case and again sqlite is an open source as before database is not a server is a file based storage that means that a database is a file that you have on your computer and you can move this file among computers it is serverless in that sense it doesn't have a server to work it's self-contained everything is is in this file uh, it has a website and uh, it has several software libraries to interact with your program with your for example python program and a uh, good thing is that for example sqlite is already embedded in python since python 2.5 i think so you don't have to install anything you already have on your computer the possibility to create a database on sqlite and to use it obviously is less uh, it has less performance than mysql or mariadb it has slower than the other is as less efficient than the other but for small programs small application or for mm, system without big hard disk or with a with a memory disk with a disk uh, in which reading and writing operation is important this could be a better solution in some sense than installing on that same computer a server full-fledged server like MariaDB so for example this is quite used in the Android world for storing some information on an app because it's a database so it has all the benefits of a database but it's not all the feature of a database of a full server so for storing some elements a few elements this is quite good uh, for storing big elements um, a large amount of data or to call to do complex operation probably the mysql mariadb family is better but we have these two family in the sense two very different family the first one is a process based family is a server you have to install it you have to start stop and manage his life cycle the other is just a file on your computer that you can move and you move everything from one computer to the other so in this picture if you remind that here in this area was depicted uh, another database the MariaDB database we have in this picture two arrows the first one that start from Python and go to our MySQL database and the other that start from here and go to MySQL so you can imagine and this is true for several programming language and several applications that you have different way of interacting with the server based process based uh, database server that is here in this blank space or with the sql library that is a fail based application so you may imagine that uh, you require some methods some function for one uh, family and another different possibly type of uh, uh, method function python method function for interacting with sqlite in reality hopefully for python this is not true hmm? because python create this database api definition that is a pep hmm? the stand for as i told you already uh, python enhancement proposal and this is the python enhancement proposal number 249 hmm? that define on paper just on paper a level of api let's say every database that should interact with a python application 
and work with Python should support this very specific method and function with the idea that you create a Python application, you need a database, and you have a uniform way to interact with those databases. No matter if it is a MySQL database, or a SQLite, a MariaDB database, or whatever you can imagine here. It's a uniform layer to interact in the same way with everything. So you can write a program, and ideally, you can take the program with the library that respects the database API specification, and today use SQLite, and in one month move to MariaDB without changing, in an ideal world, anything from your Python application. So just to have some real test of this, the PAP 249, is this stuff here. It has a series of information. So like, for example, it defined that every database should provide some methods to connect to this database. And they have a close method to close the connection, uh, commit, to send any pending transaction to the database. And no matter if you have a MySQL for this document, a MySQL, a MySQL database or SQLite, you have the close connection, to, to the close method to close the connection in every database. And uh, for example, you can uh, uh, execute some SQL query, so get some information, insert some information through the execute method. So a series of methods and functions to be applied to interact with database. But notice that this is just paper. We don't have a real implementation in, under this. We just have this specification. And then a provider, database owner, database server owner, maintainer, or other people can say, OK, I know how MySQL works. I know how SQLite works. I know that exists this, and I will create a level to interact among this specification and my SQL server or SQLite server, so that every programmer in the world can call the close method and effectively close the connection on my database, no matter what is my database. So this is very handful and helpful also to develop so that you can quite easily, if needed, move from one database family to another, to another, and so on, without changing, I would say before, ideally nothing in your Python application. We will see that you will change something, but it's something very limited in among these two families. Mm -hmm. And in particular, mm, as I said before, MariaDB or MySQL are server application, are processes, so they just be there and exist, and they don't care if you are programming in Python, Java, or whatever you want. So you need some module, some software library to connect the, that implements the database API definition, so that define what effectively a closed method on the connection does with the real database here. And so we need a MySQL connector model here, and similarly, we need a SQLite module here to say, okay, I call it the close, and, that, and now since I have SQLite, I need to perform different operation on the real database. Because here, maybe it's closing a file, on the other side, op closing a real connection to a different process that's running on your computer or in another computer. So you have these two models here that are potentially different, that are similar, surely different also. And all these, right now we are seeing this for a generic Python application from starting from next week. You will also see this not with me, my last Thursday here with you uh, for one month and more, uh, with a Flask application, so with a website, a web application, a web program that will use a database to store information in a persistent way. Because the alternative is not store data or store data as a file, but it's not really um, 
it's not really the work of this uh, plain text file to store complex or structured information. Uh, then, yes, then just for completeness, there are other options that we are not considering, uh, not depicted. Uh, another option, an alternative, let's say to MariaDB slash MySQL or SQLite is Postgre SQL, that is another server, so more similar as a uh, way of working than uh, to MySQL server, that is another server process based is much more complex than MySQL and MariaDB, but is also more complete than MySQL and MariaDB. We will not consider this right now in this course because for what we need a database, probably even MySQL and MariaDB give you way more option and function that we will use for real. And then we have just totally another type of family of databases that are all the NoSQL databases that as the name say don't use SQL for interacting with data and don't store data in the same way than Postgre or uh, MariaDB and so on. And they just they exist, we will not consider here at all. So, uh, okay, I already told you there is this PAP 249 that is database API specification that specify a standard API that Python module that are used to access database should, should implement. And it's not mandatory, but it's better if they implement that. As I told you, it does not provide a library or a module, it's just a specification on paper. And third party modules, so libraries created by other people, may adhere to this specification. So typically they adhere to the specification. Sometimes they also provide more function than the specification, but I mean, at minimum they cover the entire specification. So the main concept in PEP 249 that we also meet while we create a database is that the access to a database is always provided, no matter if it's a process uh, or a file, through a connect method that returns a connection object. Then you, so you have this connection, you open the connection, at the end you close the connection to the database, and while you open the connection, you need something that can transfer, execute the query to the database and get back the result, if any, from the database, and you need to create a context, an object that Python called cursor, so you create a connection, open a connection, create a cursor, and through the cursor you perform your operation on the database. And the cursor could be, is obtained by the connection and each connection can have multiple cursors. And a cursor then might execute a SQL query with some parameter and also cursor might fetch the result, get the result from the query. So this is a minimal example, six step to start from the connection to the definition to the query up to the return of any value from the database. So some of these uh, step could be maybe uh, skipped when you don't select anything, but you insert, for example, or delete some operation. And this is the only step, the second one, that is strongly dependent on the type of database. Why? Because, for example, to access a, a MySQL or MariaDB database, you need a username, a password, a, a HTTP address, sorry, a host, localhost, uh, polit.it, whatever, and a database name. While for opening a file, that store your SQLite database, you just need the name of the file because you have the file on your computer, typically on your project. So this is the only step that strongly depends from the type of database. All the other steps are identical in independently from the database. So what this step does very briefly, the first step is the creation of a 
uh, uh, SQL query. Hmm? So for people that never see this, this is said, uh, this is quite, let's say, simple, this one. This said select, that is just select, uh, three things, ID, original, and modified, that are three columns in your database from translation, that is a table in a database. So this query would like to select from the translation um, table all the element with ID, original, and modified, that are three of the possible many columns of the table. So it declares the query as a string in a variable, then open the connection with this mysql.connector.connect by passing the username, a password, that in this case is blank, and host, and a database name in which that table is hosted. And notice here that is mysql.connector. So this is a way to connect to a MySQL database. Then you, from the connection, get the cursor to, in the cursor, execute the query. And that, with this cursor.fetch all, get all the result at one time from the result of the query, from the query. So you get all the row, all the tuple for ID original modified that are present in the table. Then you, very important step, close the cursor, close the connection, and eventually, you return the result of this query to, for example, a um, function that called this to perform a query specifically. But step by step. The first step is defining the query. So write a correct SQL statement stored as a Python string. So this is the same example of the slide before. So you have select what ID original modified, the three columns, from the translation table. If you need, because you will need a certain point, to specify some arguments or place some arguments like insert into translation, that is the table uh, original and modified that are two, two columns on this table, these two values, one for original and the other for modified, these two values are, are placeholder, are arguments, they can change by time to time. So the first time I would like to uh, add, uh, I don't know, hello in original and another word in modified. And then after three minutes, I would like to add another couple of words to the same database by reusing the same query without rewriting. So we can make these two element like a variable and in according to the PEP 249, we have two ways of doing this uh, by declaring that these two elements here are like variable things to be replaced placeholder the first one is with percent s and the second one is with a question mark they are two identical way of working both are admitted by the uh, pap 249 different libraries choose different obviously uh, different formalism to do this. Mm -hmm. But or is a percent %s or is a question mark as a placeholder. Mm -hmm. So why placeholder are important? Why we cannot say, okay, this is open parenthesis, close double quote, plus variable, comma, plus another variable and so on. But just for, uh, in particular for possible security problem that you are creating by doing this so please don't concatenate sql statement like that with plus forget for sql that string concatenation exists for sql string concatenation does not exist uh, but use placeholder because placeholder will replace the uh, real value of this content at the most secure let's say moment uh, that is in the execute method of the cursor so never use string concatenation over SQL statement. Just again, for SQL statement, ju just forget that string concatenation in Python exists because it can give you a huge security problem. Use placeholder uh, that are this sort of templates because the actual value of this variable, of this template, are passed in the execute call is not just in text in your, um, in your program. 
as I said before, the different library can use, use different type of placeholder. Some libraries choose the percent %s and some other libraries choose the question mark. And obviously, in our cases, we have got just two types of database that use two different placeholder with SQLite that choose the question mark as a placeholder. So for example, where name equal question mark while MySQL and MariaDB use percent %s as a placeholder. Notice that uh, these remind you placeholder for matter from C programming language, from also string interpolation in Python, but you don't have percent %s for string and percent %d for number and so on, you just have percent %s here. And so they are similar as a way of writing, but we, in this case, you have percent %s for every type of value. So, or question mark or percent %s. And this is the first step, declaring the query and optionally their placeholder if needed. Then you have to connect to the database depending on the library you are using with the provided connect method that for example for MySQL is that mysql.connector.connect and require these four parameters. Then you have an open connection, a declared query. You have to obtain the cursor from the connection. Once you get the, the cursor, you can execute the real query. In this moment, in the execution moment, query parameter, percent %s, uh, com, uh, question mark, placeholders in general, we, we are replaced and these are replaced as a tuple. So you say, if you have no parameter, cursor.execute SQL. If you have a parameter or more than one parameter, you say cursor.execute SQL, comma, and a tuple that contains in order all the elements to be replaced in your SQL query. So in our example as before, this txt before will be the original, and this txt after will be the modified uh, value. If you just have one parameter to pass, you have to use a tuple in the same way as before, so just declare a tuple with an element and an uh, ending comma. Hmm? So a trailing comma at the end. Always a tuple, never a single element. So you, perf you open the connection, the open the course, create the cursor, perform the query, and now in case of a select, in case you want to get some data from the database, you can get, fetch this data from the connection, from the database, and you have two methods to do this. The second one, the first one is fetch all, just get all the result. And also you have the fetch one that give you one result per time. Both these method returns tuples. Doesn't report any strange, doesn't return any strange object, just tuple. In order that are corresponding to the selected column. So if you select ID, original and modified, the first element in the tuple will be the ID, the second element will be original, the third element will be representing a value inside the modified columns. If you are not using a select, but you are using, a, let's say, update method, like insert, delete, or update, there is no result, so you don't have to fetch anything, but since you are modifying a database, either inserting something, either updating something that is already present, or either deleting something, you just have to commit, like in Git, with the same verb, you have to commit, save all the pending queries that you realize up to this moment. If you don't commit information with insert, update, or delete, you just lose them, as you never do any of this information, any of this operation. And the commit must be called before closing the connection. As already said, don't forget it, it's also in red. Don't forget it, 
or you will use your data that modified, inserted, or deleted. So all this operation will be uh, forget, never happened, if you don't commit, don't save this operation. And then when the cursor is no longer needed, you can close the cursor, and after that, you can also close the connection. As a suggestion, especially for the first times, you, uh, we suggest to write the close statement, both the close statement for the connection and the cursor, just immediately. Just open the connection, open the cursor, and write the code to close the connection and close the cursor. And then in between, write the actual code that you want to, um, to create. And remember obviously not to return anything to another function before closing the connection or the cursor otherwise you will not close anything in the end step six finally you have the connection you have the the value from your query for example you can use the result so you can analyze data you can merge data you can ignore data you can uh, you can do whatever you want you have a some tuples and you can manage them as you want and if you need further queries go back to step three you can reuse the same connection to perform mul multiple operation just create a new cursor in the same connection so how to use all of these six steps with these three uh, these three search these databases so for mysql either mysql server or mariadb you you have to install the server on your computer so if you have uh, a macos and um, you use uh, on brew you can just type brew install uh, mariadb for example if you're using linux uh, you can say apt get minus get install MariaDB server or MySQL server, the latest version of Ubuntu should have already MySQL server installed by default. Or go to the website dev.mysql.com to download MySQL server or mariadb.org to download .org, not .com, uh, to download the, the software and on Windows just double click on the executable file and it will be installed in your computer and typically also started automatically every time you t turn on the computer so this is the first step just install the server for sqlite you don't need to install anything and then you need the connector the module to that implements the pep 249 to call this method the six steps we just seen and you have two choices the first one for mysql slash mariadb is to download and install the official mysql connector for python from the dev.mysql.com website that provide the, the the module mysql.connector as in the example before or you can use pyp like we did last time with telegram to install this py mysql connector that is an alternative not official from that that was made entirely in python is a pure python implementation and it's basically the same functional level and it's also easier to install and i will show you an example with this because just it's easier to install and it works well as the other uh, that here you just have some notes how to use the official python connector um, I will skip that and wait how to connect since step number two is the most is different among the databases uh, how to connect to create the connection to a database you have just to import PyMySQL you have to create a connection with PyMySQL dot connect and pass in this connect the parameter which parameter username password host uh, uh, optionally port uh, and uh, if it's not the one of default and the database name and then you can create the connection starting from the the the, co the connection like in the step before hmm? you just have the same connection parameter that are reported here so username password database and host 
and the same placeholder obviously so percent %s also with this pi mysql connector in sqlite instead things are a little bit easier sqlite is already the package to handle sqlite database is already installed in python since python 2.5 so also in python 3 and it's already installed it has documentation on the official mm, python documentation uh, well, it has a, also a developer site on github and the connection just means specified file name and the path on your disk if it's not in a local path so you just have to import sqlite and create a connection like sqlite3.connect and give the name of the database with extension so if it's in your project in PyCharm you can just write the name of the database .db if it is on your disk you have to write the full path to, to reach it for example in this case remember that placeholder is not percent %s but is question mark so to, to wrap up these slides to Different database, one is process-based to be installed, the other is already included in Python and it's file on your computer, typically on your project. The second one is SQLite 3, the SQLite, the other is MariaDB slash uh, MySQL. You can use whatever you want. I will show you an example with MariaDB since it's already installed. MariaDB has more feature, it's more performant than this and we probably you made a good investment if you start working with MariaDB but also SQLite 3 could be considered for quick experimentation or for storing very few data and the process is somewhat standardized from the PEP 249 so it's more or less the same for every database in Python with Python the only line of difference is connect that require different uh, parameter and as obviously different packages from which is installed and accessed so in this slide you also have some other references links and the documentation the PAP um, standard and so on so any question up to here no good so let's experiment all this thing so first of all, I would like to use MariaDB. I already installed MariaDB. As I told you, on Mac OS with Homebrew installed, it's just brew install MariaDB. It will, will install everything that you need, the latest version of MariaDB. For Windows, you have to go to the website mariadb.org and download the installer, and then it run as a process. And on Linux, you may have already uh, MySQL or MariaDB installed, otherwise, they are um, available in the various repositories, APT or YUM, YAST, or DNF, or whatever it's called in the other uh, Linux operating system. So I will just start this here. Um, run MariaDB. <laughs> Okay, it's a successfully run. We can also check that now the status of this is MariaDB started for user me and it has some properties stored in a, say, in a certain uh, position on my disk. Mm -hmm. So to quick check if the database is running, this is work on Linux, on Mac OS or Windows, you can just type MySQL minus U root Typically, the root user is present. Uh, typically, the root user has no password mm? in an installation like this, in an installation with, uh, under Windows or with installer. Typically, it asks you for a password to be used on the root user. Please don't forget this password. And if you run this, you say just a welcome screen and you can just type, get some information from the database directly from the command line we will not just to check if it works if it was stopped or it has some problem it will give me some errors here so no errors everything seems fine so you can exit and close this because the process is now running and it runs on my computer i don't really care about it in this moment 
and let me open PyCharm. So PyCharm, uh, so let me create a new project that I will call it Python database and I will put it on GitHub after the lecture or tomorrow in the morning, it depends on the time. Um, let me create a new Python file like, like before, let's call it the b-test and let me increase the zoom. So PyCharm, as you know, you can write here the code, but also PyCharm I'll, I'll give you some utility to experiment, to understand, to check if everything is working in your database. Here on the, my right, I have a database tab. You can also get this from the view menu, I think. And here you can add a series of sources from your database, either running on your computer, either running somewhere in the world, so you can press the plus symbol over here and say, okay, I would like a new data source and you have to choose some, you have some option here. You say, okay, I would like to use Amazon Redshift. I would like to use Apache Cassandra. I would like to use MariaDB, MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite, Oracle uh, DB, that is the proprietary payment, payment version of Maria, MySQL. Uh, the I don't know, Microsoft SQL Server, a lot of different SQL server. So we just say MariaDB. Then it's the same. I could also write use uh, MySQL and it works in this interface. And it may ask me a name. Uh, in this case, we just have one database, so I will leave the default name. It asks me for a host. Since the database process is running on my computer, is on the local host. Uh, the database is running on the default port, that is the 3306. So no need to change that if you don't change the default port on your during the installation or after the installation. And then ask other three information. The first one is the database name. If you already have a database inside your server, I don't have because that is a blank installation of MariaDB. So I will skip that for the moment uh, and we will create, obviously, a database. It asks for a username and a password to access the database. As I told you, my MariaDB installation has a root user, a blank password, and that root user by default is uh, only authorized to uh, access DDB from my computer. So for only from localhost. Even now, if I give you the address, the IP address of my computer, you cannot use the root user with an empty password to access the database that is running here because the root user is restricted in this moment only to accept connection from my own computer on the same host. So I can write here root as a user, skip the password and press test connection and if everything go well you see successful otherwise you see failed if you never run this before you see here you should see here in the bottom of the screen a install missing driver and you have to press this install missing driver before testing the connection because PyCharm needs to download the missing driver to access the MariaDB database it doesn't have so let's maybe just to see uh, how it, it appears. Create a uh, MySQL, for example. Yeah, a uh, MySQL database here, you see download missing driver files. So you have to press on download. And from that moment on, PyCharm has the capability to access your database. Mm -hmm. So. After inserting all this information and pressing OK, okay I just have this uh, localhost, hmm, that is the name, the default name that I have, with two folder, let's say one is called schema and the other is called collection, 
and in schema right now you just have the information schema that is the default schema that it's better not to touch that so right now we, we need to create a database we need to create a table inside the database and we need to define some column inside the table to just use insert some information and so on and we can do all of this by using this uh, user interface provided by um, PyCharm mm -hmm. so, so just to say this is the Python code no mm -hmm. so we just don't write Python code for now just use this window here so on localhost that is our database we can say new schema mm -hmm. so we can create a new database inside the server and I can call it uh, to-do list for example right right <coughs> so you write the name of the database that you want to create here and you can see here the SQL script that is automatically generated from your so you can create this uh, schema here inside my database and inside the schema I can create a table that I call to do and I also add two columns in this table one is description and the so we are just creating a table that store our to-do list and our to-do list will have two columns one is the text of the to-do list buy some milk go home whatever you want that are string charter and the other is whether the task is urgent or not mm. so we create this column that's called uh, description as, as a type a char because we would like to insert some char just not one char but we admit uh, that we are writing a sentence with 255 charter mm. we don't imagine to write a um, a book as a to do as a single element of a to-do list and then we can have uh, the uh, urgent field that instead is uh, an integer type just a number in our case it could be zero or one for example and so we have this column this table that's called to do with these two columns so description that is a uh, string let's say and urgent that is an entire and you here see the equivalent SQL script that uh, you are creating so we can press execute and here you see a to-do table you can open it and see that there is of your table hmm, with every element in the column so we just have two columns we can here add delete whatever we want so we can press for example this plus symbol here and say as a description uh, uh, I don't know hmm. and argent zero for example so we just add one line we can remove the line we can add multiple line and if a python program or any program add something in this table we can have here a look of what happens what is present in the table in our table in our database so since i added a new information i perform an insert operation uh, i need to save this operation to commit this operation otherwise it will not be saved in my database and here there is an arrow which said written submit and um, so we can press this and it will save my information if I close this here and reopen here you see that come on you see that we just have the same information as before because I just saved that so we can try for example to create a program that get all the information on this table and maybe then add a new table a new 
a new tuple in this table, a new row in this table. Mm -hmm. So we just have this table created here. So we'll let's leave this tab uh, open for now. I will just shrink that column on the right and so go back here in Python. So here the first things that we are we need to do is to install the PyMySQL um, module to interact with my MySQL slash MariaDB server. So as last time from the preferences in PyCharm under project, project interpreter, we see all the packages, all the modules that are already installed. We can press the plus symbol and look for PyMySQL. This one, the first one, the simplest one, PyMySQL, MySQL without any other extension. So this is a pure Python MySQL driver. That is our connector. As before, we can install that and close this and close this. Good. So here we can now say import PyMySQL and start writing our code. So the first thing that we would like to do is, well, define a main function, first of all, and we need to perform these, let's say, um, six steps as before. So the first step is, the first step is prepare the SQL query. The second step is create the connection, then we can create, uh, we can get a cursor, four step four step execute the query fifth we would uh, like to select the content of our table so we need to fetch the result and print it and finally close yes close also the cursor we close everything yes close the cursor and the connection. So, prepare the SQL query. SQL equal, we say that is a string and we want to select everything from um, our table was called to do. And that's it. We just define the query it's a select, no placeholder, no parameter, no anything. Then we can create the connection. So connection equal uh, pi mysql dot connect. And we need to give these four parameter as before. So the user, that in our case is root, the password, that is empty in our case, um, the host, 
that is localhost, and the database name that in our case is, uh, uh, I don't remember, to the list. So let's put that in a new line. So prepare the query, create the connection, and open the connection, then we can get a cursor from the connection uh, let's call it cursor dot connection dot uh, cursor so we get the cursor from the connection we can have multiple cursor for each connection and potentially we can also have multiple connection in parallel these two things strongly depend from the implementation of the database by the API they are allowed then we can you we just have the the cursor so we can execute the query that is in the SQL uh, variable at the beginning and we need to fetch the results and print them we don't have to return the results in any place uh, so the result it's equal to cursor dot fetch all we just need to fetch all we have just one line but we get everything from that and finally we can close the cursor dot cursor dot close and the connection dot close Let me separate these in a uh, 6a close the connection. So the sixth step reporting in the slide, prepare the query, create a connection, get a cursor from that connection, execute the query on the cursor, fetch all the results. We just have one line, close the cursor and close the connection. So right now, if we, we, we need to test it. So as we did for all the cores, we can run this. Yeah. Uh, we need to fetch the results and maybe print also the results, just in case. Uh, we can, so I run it, no error. That is the first result. And you see that result contain a tuple the result is a tuple whose single element are other tuples with the element in the column so the first element represent the value of the first column the second element is the element in the second column if we have multiple columns, we have just a bigger tuple with the first element a tuple being the first and the second column comma another tuple and so on so result is a tuple of tuples, let's say. So you have to get every single, every element of this, let's say, parent table, tuple is one row of the call, of the table that you are querying. So it works in this case. Let's try to maybe insert something just to also experiment with placeholder and so on. So let's put everything here so i create a query for selection i create a course a connection a cursor an execution that cursor a fetch and a close the cursor so i can create a new cursor from the same connection obviously before closing the connection so here we can say another sql query for inserting elements for example and we can insert an element uh, new to the list so we can call it sql insert and that has insert into to do that is our table and 
we need to fill all the columns that we want to, to fill. So description and uh, uh, urgent. So insert something into our uh, table with, the, with these two columns. What we want to insert as, as in the slide values, values, which values, well, we have two values. One is description, the other is urgent. We don't know which values are here. So we put here, we don't know how to perform a string concatenation. So we put here, placeholder placeholder for my sql r percent s so we just need to perf to placeholder percent s and percent s basically hmm? so insert what values two values that we don't know right now into to do description and urgent which are these two values that we want to uh, insert so for example is my description uh, that is uh, I don't know, go home. And my mm, urgency, that is one. Let's say it's very urgent for us to go home. Um, so we define the query as before, create the connection. We don't need to create a connection. We just can reuse the connection as before. We don't close the connection for that reason. We just need a new cursor. Let's call it cursor two for now. Uh, so from the same connection as before, we just get a new cursor in the same identical way we did before. We get the, the cursor, we then execute the query. So cursor two dot execute. What we want to execute, SQL insert. But right now we have to perform also pass two parameters, the two values here. So we need to pass a tuple that has first element of the tuple, my description, and second element of the tuple, my urgency. Again, if we have only one element to pass, we have to insert in a tuple the single element, like open parenthesis, first element, comma, close parenthesis, because this must be a tuple. This second parameter of the execute function hmm? uh, so mm, we get the cursor we execute the query uh, it's an insertion we don't need to fetch anything hmm? we just insert an element we don't get anything from the element so we need to submit the change to commit the change to save the change with cursor to dot commit no uh, with connection dot commit hmm? because we can we can perform multiple cursor here maybe an insertion an update a deletion another insertion and so on and that at the end of all these operation we can commit all these operation in just one moment with the connect in, in the connection we can commit time by time and we say okay all these operations no matter how much they are let's commit everything in one side at the end so right now we have just one one, one operation and the commit but the commit is on the connection for this reason it save every cursor every operation every context that you have up to that moment and then uh, after the commit you can close the second cursor as before and you need to close the connection that we just left here after so if we run this so here we see no difference because we just print the select that happens before the insertion but here for example if we refresh this we see that a new lines appear and if we run again this program you see that now it prints the first two lines we also go home and obviously we inserted another task with the same content as before so here we just have a third line that is exactly 
like the second one because we print the content and then perform an insertion so this close this lecture and the first step with databases uh, on monday as i told you before you have one hour and a half in the classroom well not here whatever it is uh, then in the second part of the lecture we have the lab and in the lab you will have an exercise on this if i remind, remember correctly on a to-do list or something like that that will uh, follow you as a running example for several labs uh, you probably started last time even and in parallel to the lab we will pass group by group while we are working on this lab on this exercise to give you the feedback for deliverable number one hmm? so this close this lecture it's, it's like five before seven so it's a good time to close have a good evening and if you have a question uh, about this or about the project or whatever i'm here <laughs>